All right, uh, let's talk about a player to a career profile today of somebody who's not in the Hall of Fame that there are some who would claim he should be in there. And the stats, I could see them backing that up, but I can also understand why it's taken a while and he didn't get in there on the first ballot. That's Pierre Turgeon, the number one draft pick in the 1987 draft by the Buffalo Sabres. Uh, and, an interesting note, before his NHL career started, January 4th, 1987, there was a bench-clearing brawl between Canada and the Soviet Union, and it resulted in bans and all this other crap went on. And guess what? Pierre Turgeon's the only player who didn't get off the bench. He didn't get involved in that brawl whatsoever. Um, so, you know, if you're a Don Cherry type, you may not think that's great. Otherwise, you might go, you know what? He's a skill player. He doesn't need to be on the ice picking a fight with the Soviets. Um, at any rate, he was part of that team, but he wouldn't go back to the 1988 World Juniors because he was in the NHL. His first year, 76 games played, 14 goals, 28 assists, 42 points. Respectable, not great rookie season. Played six games in the playoffs, four goals, three assists, seven points for the Buffalo Sabres. So there's some hope here that this guy's going to be the future for the Sabres. And that was the idea. Uh, 80 games played in 88-89, 34 goals, 54 assists, 88 points. And uh, in the playoffs, he plays five games, three goals, five assists, eight points. Now, when I do these career retrospectives, I don't always get into the playoffs. But with Turgeon, I think this is part of the reason why we haven't seen him named to the Hall of Fame yet. So, that's two seasons in the playoffs and twice uh, eliminated in the first round. 89-90, 80 games played, 40 goals, 66 assists, 106 points. That's the first of two times he hit the 100-point mark. Uh, six games in the playoffs, two goals, four assists, six points. So again, about a point a game in the playoffs. And it's not his fault that the Sabres aren't good enough to advance past the first round, but that's just where they are. 90-91, uh, 78 games played, 32 goals, 47 assists, 79 points. Six games played in the playoffs, three goals, one assist, four points. So where we're at right now is a guy who four years into his career looks like he's going to be at least a point a game player. And... The Sabres should be happy with him. Well, that's where they're made an offer they can't refuse. Eight games into 91-92, two goals, six assists, eight points. October 25th of 1991, the Islanders come calling. He is traded to the Islanders along with Benoit Hogue, Uwe Krupp, and Dave McElwain. Going the other way, Randy Hillier, Pat Lafontaine, Randy Wood, and a 1992 fourth-round pick. So Buffalo goes, we can add Lafontaine. Sorry, Pierre, you're on your way out, and turgeon has gone. His first year with the Islanders, after that eight games of Buffalo, he plays 69 with the Islanders, 38 goals, 49 assists, 87 points. So a grand total of 95 points, and 40 of those are goals. So that's his second 40-goal season, and almost 100 points for him in 77 games, but almost doesn't count in the history books, right? So no playoffs for him that year, but in 92-93 there is. 83 games played, 58 goals. Uh, 74 assists, 132 points. In 11 playoff games, 6 goals, 7 assists, 13 points. Now, 93 was an interesting year in that third place teams did pretty well in the playoffs, and Turgeon was one of those players. And of course, there was the infamous incident with, uh, with Dale Hunter. But, that being said, he did play 83 games in that regular season. And people always ask, 83 games? That's got to be a typo. No, they played... 84 games for at least I think it was two or three years they played 84 games in a season before they dropped back down to 82. So the 92-93 season his most successful offensively and 93-94 takes place. Uh, 69 games played he misses 11 or 13 I should say I guess 13 or 15 depending on how many were played in 94. I think it was 84 games that year. Uh, 38 goals 56 assists 94 points. He would have had 100 if he played the full season but he didn't. Uh, plays four playoff games, has one assist. 94, that was a rough year for the Islanders in the playoffs. And so, you know, really, really good totals for the Islanders. You wouldn't think he'd be on the trade block, but. 94-95, he plays 34 games prior to the trade. 13 goals, 14 assists, 27 points. Definitely dealing with some injuries at this stage. April 5th, 1995, he's traded to Montreal with Vladimir Malikov. Four, Craig Darby, Kirk Muller, and Matthew Schneider. Excellent trade for Montreal. Plays 15 games in 95 with them. 11 goals, 9 assists, 20 points after the trade. So, looks great. Scoring at a really good clip. His one full season with Montreal, 95-96. 
plays 80 games, 38 goals, 58 assists, 96 points. Close to 100, but again, close to isn't exactly 100 points. Uh, plays six games in the playoffs, two goals, four assists, six points. Everything looks great. He's a French-Canadian player playing in Montreal, really enjoying playing in Montreal. What could go wrong? Well, Montreal decided they had to make a trade. 96-97, he's played nine games, one goal, 10 assists, 11 points, and they decide to trade him. Bewilderingly, bewilderingly, he is traded to the St. Louis Blues. October 29th, 1996, he's traded with Craig Conroy and Roy Fitzpatrick for Murray Barron, Shane Corson, and the 1997 fifth-round pick. Uh, you know, I understood what they were trying to do in Montreal with getting Shane Corson, but no. No would have been my answer to that. He goes to St. Louis, does pretty well. 69 games played after the trade, 25 goals, 49 assists, 74 points. But his points per game do start to fall at this point. In the playoffs, five games played, one goal, one assist, two points. 97-98, 60 games played, grand total of 60 the whole year. Uh, 22 goals, 46 assists, 68 points. Plays 10 in the playoffs, four goals, four assists, eight points in the playoffs that year. 98-99, still playing for the Blues. 67 games, 31 goals, 34 assists, 65 points. In the playoffs, 13 games, 4 goals, 9 assists, and 13 points. 99-2000, he only plays 52 games. Again, we're dealing with some injuries. And once he started slowing down, and, and injuries and aging, you know, worked together to make that happen, I really affected his game. 26 goals, 40 assists, 66 points in those 52 games that year. Plays seven playoff games and has seven assists. 2000-2001 is last year wearing the Blues jerseys. 79 games played, 30 goals, 52 assists, 82 points. Plays 15 games in the playoffs, five goals, 10 assists, 15 points. 15 games in the playoffs is the most he would play. He then moves on to Dallas. Uh, his first year in Dallas, well, it didn't work very well with him in Dallas. And I, I don't know if this was... Uh, um, an issue with Dallas not meshing with him or if it was just that he hit kind of a wall. Play 66 games, 15 goals, 32 assists, 47 points. So dramatic difference in his point totals. Very disappointing for a Dallas team that really needed him to get out there and score. 65 points in 0203 or 65 games in 0203, 12 goals, 30 assists for 42 points. Plays five playoff games and has one assist. Again, great numbers in St. Louis and then after he gets to Dallas it just falls off. Uh, 2003-2004, he plays 76 games, so relatively healthy, but only scores 15 goals, 25 assists, 40 points. In the playoffs, 5 games, 1 goal, 3 assists, 4 points. Coming out of the lockout, he signs with the Avalanche. His first year with the Avalanche, plays 62 games, 16 goals, 30 assists, 46 points. In the playoffs, he played 5 games and had 2 assists. But again, you'll notice he was missing a ton of games. With injury, if, if he'd been healthy his whole career, um, we're looking at a guy who should score well in excess of 1,400 points. Uh, 17 games played in 06 07, has four goals and three assists. He would retire September of 2007, make it official. We knew it was coming before that, though. Uh, to make his career totals, 1,294 games played, 515 goals, 812 assists, 1,327 points. In the playoffs, he played a grand total of 109 games, 35 goals, 62 assists, 97 points. He is the highest scoring player in NHL history who is not currently in the Hall of Fame. Now, why he should be in the Hall of Fame. The 132-point season here, 515 goals all overall, and the 1,327 points. His points per game in the playoffs, less than a point a game but not by much. So he scores almost 100 points in a little over 100 games. He's close. Number one pick and part of some very high profile trades in the 90s. The detractor with him, he doesn't win awards. 92-93 season, he wins the Lady Bing, that's it. He was never a dominant guy, wasn't a first or second team all-star. He was a very good player who scored a bunch of points. There was a perception that he was soft that was something that was out there throughout his career. I always found it weird. I always thought, you know, if the guy scores 100 points or 95 points, I don't really care that he might not have the physical side or he might get pushed around a little bit in certain games. He still scored well over 90 points. He scored 100 points some seasons. Uh, pretty good player. But I, I, I do, you know, see that criticism and, and I can kind of understand it. But at the same time, um, 
Turgeon had a very good career. Was he a megastar? No. How many times did he hit 50 goals? Once. Um, you can make the argument he belongs in. Again, I can understand why he's not in there. Uh, I do wonder, like if he had retired after 2000-2001, rather than sign in Dallas and then move on to Colorado, his points per game would have ended up being higher for his career. And, and maybe he would have been in already by now. Maybe those years in Dallas and Colorado that dragged down his points per game, maybe that hurt. But again, I, I'm not sure how that would necessarily hurt him. The other thing may very well be he never won a Stanley Cup. He didn't lead a team to a Stanley Cup final. And that may very well be something that teams look at and say, well, that's... Or not teams, that, that people who are uh, deciding on the nominations and who should go in the Hall of Fame, that that, that, that group looks at and goes, eh, he's not really there. I think he eventually gets in. I think we're going to wait for probably one of the, the weaker classes before he gets in. I was kind of surprised he didn't this year. I understand that, you know, Guy Carboneau is a is a, a big name defensively and in Montreal circles and certain other uh, uh, circles of fans, he may be considered this great player. But I'm kind of surprised that, that Carboneau gets in before Turgeon, just a little bit. Uh, but we'll see. We'll see if he ends up getting in sooner or later. It looks like it's going to be later. He's been eligible for a while. And the other thing that may end up working against him is the longer that you're eligible and you don't get in, uh, I, I get the feeling that it might be harder to get in. I know that's an issue in baseball for sure. I don't think it's as much of an issue with hockey, but you know there may be certain things that, that, that if you're on the committee, you might look at and say, eh, I would put him in, but... And it may be a playoff thing. It may be, yeah, he got 1,300 games, but he played, or 1,300 points, but he had about 1,300 games. And you may look and say he he was great for a couple of years, but he was never really truly at that next level and he didn't win a bunch of awards. Again, this is part of that whole Hall of Fame process. It is subjective. Let me know what you guys think. Hall of Fame or not, don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. And hey, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll talk to you again soon.